everyone. Welcome to another Pals and Paws live webinar. Today we're going to be making rope toys or braided and um, knotted tie toys. So um, all you'll need for an activity like this is some pieces of fleece or even an old t-shirt will work and you can cut that into strips and just pretend like it's fleece. But any um, somewhat durable uh, cloth material is what you want to use since um, dogs will be chewing on these and sometimes they like to tear things apart. You want to make something that'll hold up at least for a little while. And there's a couple of different designs that you can make with the fleece or old t-shirts. So one of the simplest things to do is um, first you want to cut out a bunch of strips um, of fleece and depending on if you want to make a braided toy like this one um, you want to cut out thin strips maybe about three two to three inches wide and however long you would like your toy to be so this one will probably turn out <laughs> to be a long good uh, toy for tug of war Whereas if you want to make an octopus toy, that's why I have a tennis ball here, you're gonna wanna cut thicker strips. Mm -hmm. So two long, thick strips about uh, six inches wide. So to start out for the braided toy, this one has the thin strips. You would cut um, strips about two inches to three inches wide by maybe eight to 10 inches long at least. This one's probably close to um, 48 inches, <laughs> cut quite long, but that's okay. Like I said, it will be an extra long rope toy good for playing tug of war. And uh, to start, you want to join these three pieces together. And anyone who's braided things before knows you just want to tie a knot at the top. So I'm kind of twisting it so that the knot Will be nice and tight. See I'm twisting there and I'm just gonna poke the ends through the loop. All three strips should be pulled through your knot and then you want to pull it really hard especially using fleece. Fleece is fairly stretchy so you want to make sure you're tying it really tightly each time. If you tie it kind of loose, um, you might be pulling on it a little bit and it'll uh, squeeze back together on itself, almost like a rubber band. So it'll be really flimsy if you're not doing it really, really tight every time you make a new knot or braid. So once you have your first knot tied really nice and tight, you want to lay it out and kind of separate out your three different strips. And for anyone who's braided before, you probably know the next step already, but if you haven't braided before, the trick is you want to take one piece on the side, either the left or the right. I'm a righty, so I usually start on the right-hand side. And you take the right-hand side, put it over what used to be the middle strip. So this is the middle strip, this is the right, left. I'm taking the right-hand strip, putting it over the middle. So now the right hand strip is our new middle strip. And then you want to alternate on each side. So I'm taking the left strip, putting it over the middle strip. And now the right strip becomes the new middle strip. And you just keep alternating and pulling it really, really tight each time. So and sometimes you gotta let your ends straighten themselves out. So now this is our right hand piece. I'm putting it into the middle. And same thing, the left hand piece into the middle. And pull it nice and tight. Right hand piece to the middle, left hand piece to the middle. And it might take a little bit of practice. Like if you mess up, it's okay to kind of undo the work you've done, start over because you want to, once again, make sure that it's really, really tight. The nice thing about fleece is that it does have some give, so usually you are able to tighten, you know, after you've made a couple of braids, but still try to stay on top of it and really tighten each time you make a new braid or not so that it'll be nice and firm, hold its shape, and keep that durability. So you would just keep 
going in the same pattern over and over and over again. And if I did this entire braid here, it might take me a while since I'm working with a lot of fleece. But that's the idea. You can see it's nice and tight. I've braided each little section. So when I pull on it, it's about the same size. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of give. Whereas if I tie them really loosely, like here's kind of haphazard, you can see when I pull, it looks one way, but then it gets really flimsy if you're not pulling it tight. So you want it nice and tight like this, not loose like that. So once you're done braiding um, all of your strips of fleece, you'll have something like this. So this one is done really nice and well. Whoever made it did it super symmetrical, which makes me happy as I'm an organized person, but uh, definitely this is nice and tight. It doesn't have too much give, and you can even make a loop at the end, um, depending on the shape that uh, you want to end up with. But in case you want a different option, not just a simple braid, you can make an octopus dog toy. So what you want to do with that, like I said, is start with um, two long strips of wide cut fleece. So um, cut two strips about six inches wide and then maybe um, 12 to 18 inches long. And you want to lay those in an X pattern. So let's see. Yeah, we want a nice X shaped pattern so you guys can kind of see the table there. I've laid out one strip underneath, one on top, in an X shape. So hopefully you can kind of see the X there. And what I'm gonna do is take a tennis ball and put it in the middle. And that's gonna be like the octopus's head. And um, to start, we want to take the underneath strip there. So this one, see how it's tucked. Oh, sorry, it's so hard for me to get the angle without <laughs> seeing the camera. Um, so this, the one we're going to start with is underneath the second strip. And if you wanted some extra cushion, you can even take a third piece of fleece and just kind of wrap that around the tennis ball. So now our tennis ball is kind of hidden in this little um, pocket there. So I'm taking the piece that's underneath and I'm going to tie it together really, really tightly around the ball and around the large strip of fleece that's on top of it. So really, really tightly, really, really tight. So this is that first strip and you can see it um, formed a pretty tight cover over the tennis ball. But now we wanna take that second strip, the one that was on top of the other and tie that together. And it's really easy to lose track of which piece you're working with. So just um, take your time, pay attention, Make sure that um, you're using the different strip of fleece. And it should look something like this when you're done. See, that's where the tennis ball is inside. And there's two knots from the two large strips of fleece on the bottom. And I've pulled them really, really tight because we don't want that tennis ball to come out anywhere. Let's see. Yep really tight really tight it's always worth double checking and making sure that uh, you pull it even tighter so now you'll have four really large strips of fleece hanging from the tennis ball wrapped inside so what you want to do is cut those four strips into three strips each so you'll have 12 total strips when you're done you want to take a pair of scissors and I'm working with just one six inch strip right now. So there's four six inch strips total. So I'm just gonna take one and cut that into three. And then similar to the braided toy that we just made, we're gonna braid each of these sections. And you could always add another two strips of fleece if you wanted even more. Um, 
tentacles, <laughs> so to speak. But I just cut one six inch strip that's hanging off so far into three pieces. So there's one, two, three thin pieces out of that one thick strip. So I'm going to braid those really tightly. Just need a little more cut there. Okay. So we want to braid that really, really tightly. The nice thing is you don't have to be perfect when you're braiding or knotting. Um, the dogs, you know, aren't going to judge if it looks a little wonky. Um, so it's a fairly forgiving activity. Just once again, that most important part is that you're pulling it really, really tight every time you make a braid or a knot. Because it doesn't matter how it looks, but it does matter how it feels and how it'll hold up, how it's put together. So I'm trying to keep my fleece taut, you know, nice and tight and taut. So I'm pulling it a lot and that's okay. You know, that's why we use fleece or an old t-shirt. This is definitely a time-consuming type of activity, so it would be good to do in front of like your favorite Netflix show or if um, you want an activity, something to do with friends where you can all use your own materials and space out, get creative. This is another good one for that kind of situation because it takes time and a little bit of attention, but not a lot of skill, which is nice. And the animals enjoy it. And you might be able to hear, I don't think you guys can see her just yet, but I have Princess with me today. Um, she is available for adoption. She's about six years old. She is super sweet and super wiggly, as you guys will probably see in a couple of minutes. So let me finish tying a few more and we'll see how she likes our rope toys. And once you get to the end of one of your thicker strips and you've tied it nice and tight, then you just want to create another knot at the bottom so that the pieces don't come undone and your braid stays how you made it. And so you probably want to end with like just an inch or half an inch left of your material. I'm not sure if you guys can hear her, but she's sniffing all around. She's excited to give these toys a try, I think. And you can tie this with like a double knot or a classic square knot, if I'm remembering my knots correctly. So it always helps to do a double. Like I said, you want to make sure it's really secure so that your braid doesn't come undone. And it's okay if it has the little strips hanging off the end there. So then I would just cut another one of my thick strips into threes. Or if you want, if you... um want to give the octopus the true eight legs, then you could cut six strips and make two different braids. And when you're cutting those strips, you want to cut all the way to the top. So see, I'm making my cut for the strips for my braids all the way to the top by where the tennis ball is. So I'll try braiding this section, and then we'll give Princess our rope toys. So 
once again for braiding and taking the right hand piece over the center, left hand piece over the center, right hand piece over the center. Pull really, really tight. Left hand piece over the center, right hand over the center, left over center, right over center, and pull really, really hard. It is pretty much a necessary step to pull like every single time you make a braid or at least every other time you make a braid. If you forget to do that for a while, you'll notice that um, the braids you're making will get much more loose. So really pull on it, make sure it's tight very, very frequently. We um, would not recommend these types of toys for uh, power chewers. It's a term um, that animal shelters, veterinarians, anyone um, with a power chewer at home knows what we're talking about. But basically that just means a dog um, or an animal that really, really gets a lot of stimulation from chewing and therefore will destroy um, the things that they're chewing a lot of the time uh, and easily. Like uh, a power chewer can um, tear up a tennis ball in a few minutes. Even some of the harder rubber toys, they'll still chew apart and break apart. So um, we would not recommend this type of toy for a power chewer. But if your animal just enjoys toys in general, especially stuffed ones or rope toys, and they're not gonna just gnaw at it all day and tear it apart, then this would be fine to give them. But if your animal is super toy motivated and really likes to chew, this might not be the best option. And it's always important to supervise your animal playing with any new toy and toys in general. It's good to be around, make sure that they're staying safe. So I'm just gonna Tie this one up in a minute here and we'll see what Princess thinks. And she is more attention motivated than toy motivated. So if she doesn't love her toy, I'm gonna try to not take it personally. I think it's just because she has other things that she's interested in. So once I'm close enough to the bottom, I've made my braids all nice and tight. So now I'm just going to tie that double square knot or the standard knot for most people because I'm pretty sure it's the square knot, but it's been a long time since I was in Girl Scouts, so we'll call it the square knot, but it's a standard knot. So these are two of the octopus legs done, and then I would just cut these large strips into threes, braid them like I did here, so he would have four braids coming off of the tennis ball, or if you wanted, you could um, cut them into six strips, braid twice for each side, and then you would have the eight legs like a normal octopus. So let's see what Miss Princess thinks. Well, let me flip around. Uh-oh. There we go. Princess! Here! There's Princess! What do you think? Princess! Hi, baby. What do you think? You like that? <gasps> Go get it! <laughs> like I said, she might not be the most toy motivated, but... Princess! Oh, good girl! Go get it! Go get it! Go get it! Huh? Show your toy! Do you like Mr. Octopus? Princess! Come here. Oh, yeah, she's more of a cuddler than a playful one, but that's okay. What do you think of the octopus? Huh? <laughs> what do you think? How about this one? Go get it. Uh. Oh, oh. Princess, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, yep, we just want belly rubs. <laughs> and that's okay. 
That's why uh, it's good to know your dog and what they like to play with. And um, if uh, rope toys aren't their thing, there's plenty of dogs in animal shelters that will get enjoyment out of this. So I'll probably give these toys to some of our other adoptable dogs since Princess would rather wiggle around and get belly rubs, which is totally fine. Mm. <laughs> what? Did you work hard making the octopus? Princess? Princess? What? Yeah. Get the octopus. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Princess. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another Pals and Paws live webinar. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for story time. Bye. Say bye, Princess. Princess, come here. Hey, say bye bye. You're the star. No? Thanks. See you guys later.